I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. And what you're going to learn today uh, is that, like, half of the flight controllers that are out there are all made by the same company. Well, maybe half isn't the right number, but there's this company called Airbot, and they make the Omnibus line of flight controllers, as well as their own Airbot flight controllers that you can buy from myairbot.com. Yeah, but they actually OEM, like, a lot of the flight controllers out there for other people that you might not know about. So when you look at a lot of the innovation that has gone on in flight controller development, Actually, Airbot deserves a lot of credit for a lot of things that you may have actually thought came from somebody else. For example, the Omnibus F3 was, I think, one of the first, if not the first, flight controller to have Betaflight OSD on board. SD card logging for BlackBot. Oh, I remember the days when I said, can't we just get rid of these data flash chips? Won't somebody put an SD card reader on a flight controller? And if they weren't the first, they were very close to the first. So that is why we're looking today at the Omnibus Fireworks kind of an odd name for a flight controller but there you go who cares uh, we're looking at the omnibus fireworks now on the one hand this is just another flight controller from omnibus with all of the things you'd come to expect but it has a few interesting little features that i think does make it worthy of being called out in a video of its own that's what we're going to look at today The relationship between the Omnibus Fireworks and the Omnibus Corner is pretty obvious. The Omnibus Corner was the first flight controller I saw to take the, the mounting hole and kind of extend it out here around the edge of the board. And that gives you a little more room to solder on. Well, here are the ESC plus and minus pads. And here's where your signal, signal ground, and there's an ESC telemetry pad there uh, that goes to a UART if you're doing ESC telemetry. And that's a really clever solution because like it could get really hard to get all of the things you need to get onto a board this size, especially when there's a lot of room taken up as there is here with this gyro. So the gyro is soft mounted on a separate board. It's connected by a ribbon cable here, but you can see unlike some of the other boards you may have seen with a ribbon cable with gyro, the ribbon cable is reasonably well, it's sort of contained and protected. It's not likely to get whacked or scuffed or anything like that. So that's good. And that soft mounted gyro, the promise is that it will help to uh, limit vibration uh, you don't need to soft mount the board because the gyro itself is soft mounted and you'll be able to run it 32 kilohertz and turn all your filters off and all that wonderful stuff. I obviously I haven't flight tested this board this is just a bench review a sort of a feature review some people got a little bit mad. They thought that I reviewed the Helio Spring without flight testing it. That's actually not true. I did flight test the Helio Spring. I just didn't show you that stuff because the video was long enough. Sometimes people get a little bit mad when I talk about a flight controller and I haven't flight tested it. Well, to that I say two things. Number one, most of them fly the same, guys, come on. They mostly fly the same. That's less true now that we're getting into 32 kilohertz. We might say, well, how good is this soft mounting? How good is it at running 32K without having noise problems? Okay, fair enough. But the other thing is that, like, there's got to be a place to just look at the features of the board and not necessarily talk about flight testing. I can't put every single board that I think is interesting and want to talk about into a copter and fly it. It would take too much time. So as long as you know what you're getting, I feel like I've done my job. I haven't flight tested this one. What are the interesting, clever, novel features of this board that I think are so worth mentioning? Well, the first one, as I already told you, was very clever how they've put these at the edge, but that's not new. The Omnibus CTR had the same thing. I do like that, unlike the Omnibus CTR, they've added these little cutouts here to make it a little easier. A lot of times when you have to put the wire on top of the pad and solder it down, it can be tricky. The wires can sort of spread out and make bridges, and with this way, you can just kind of get this the wire up here in there like that and solder it in it's going to hold securely come up from the bottom be very neat very nice here we see the actual feature that made me want to show you this board and it shows you what a nerd i am this is the current sensor on the board and normally this is where you would have a shunt resistor right but this is not a shunt resistor this is a hall effect sensor and Hall effect is a way of measuring current based a DC current based on magnetic uh, field induction. And what this means for you 
that this is a Hall effect sensor instead of a shunt resistor is that the current sensor will always be calibrated correctly. At least that's what AirBot promises. Uh, it, what it means is that if you put in the current, uh, the, the scaling and the offset value that they give you, and they give you right here in the box and give you a little piece of paper with the, hello. There you go, there you go. Give you a little piece of paper with the information that you need to put into the Betaflight power and battery tab. Once you do that, this Hall Effect sensor comes from the factory calibrated and you'll get accurate current sense without having to do that whole procedure where you have to calibrate your current sensor resistor with the, like you normally have to do. And that's pretty freaking cool. The other advantage of a Hall Effect sensor is a shunt resistor is causing a small amount of resistance and it causes a small amount of power loss. It's a very, very small amount, but some people argue that, oh, we don't like that. Well, if that's the kind of person you are, this is the board for you. <laughs> There's no shunt resistor to waste any of your energy as heat, not even a little bit. Now I said that on boards like this, space is at a premium, so you might be surprised to see that we've got these naked pads here. And what is going on here on the underside where we've got these, un is this a mistake? Do these pads not get populated by the pick and place machine over at the factory? No, no, no. What these are, are these pads here at the, at the four corners are for you to add surface mount tantalum capacitors and the idea here is that if you're like if you're going to be running on 6s maybe you feel like you need a little bit of extra noise protection or i don't know if you're running particularly noisy yes if you just like capacitance and you feel like you want some extra capacitance instead of having to have big electrolytic capacitors hanging off you can solder down and and although this is surface mount soldering it's fairly easy to do with a soldering iron you can solder these down and you can add uh, tant tantalum capacitors here to get just a little bit more noise protection. Here we've got a pad for an additional resistor and what that would do is scale the current sensor up. The default current sensor goes up to 150 amps but if you feel like you want that more you put a, an additional resistor here and that increases it to 300 amps which you'll probably never hit but if you need to go over 150 that's the thing you can do. This board is covered with ribbon cable connectors. Now this ribbon cable connector here goes to the gyro that's built in, so that one you're not really gonna do anything with. Uh, this one here is for a four-in-one ESC, which is gonna surprise you because most four-in-one ESCs are gonna have like this kind of little plug, right? So the idea here, I guess this is designed for use with a four-in-one ESC that takes a ribbon cable. I, there are not very many of those. I'm gonna guess it's an AirBot product as well. So, but I don't know off the top of my head what it is. So anyway, there you go. And on the bottom here, we've got another ribbon cable connector, which is used for an SPI input. SPI is the interface that's used to talk to the gyro, to talk to the SD card reader. Uh, and it's marked on the instructions as being intended for use with a second gyro. So I guess the idea is if you wanna play with some other kind of gyro chip, other than the one that comes on it, you can, you can swap back and forth via a command line parameter. That's probably not something most of us are going to do, but it, it really shows how uh, AirBot is trying to just cover all their bases with what you can do with this flight controller. Here is the camera and video transmitter header for the uh, flight controller, and they've got a shared ground, and there's a RAM pin, which is filtered power for the camera and video transmitter. Now this outputs 8 volts. Uh, with the idea being similar to my flight controller that by outputting a little bit uh, lower than battery voltage you get some additional filtering. So this outputs 8 volts for the camera and the video transmitter and then you've got the camera control, uh, smart audio, video input, and video output pads. So there is a camera control pad uh, for if you want to try and do FPV uh, OSD camera control. The one That's the thing that lets you adjust your menu of your FPV camera using your transmitter sticks. It's interesting to note, and I'm just now noticing this, that they actually have duplicated these pads on the top and bottom of the flight controller. And the same thing is true over here. Here are the pads where there's the main uh, sort of UART inputs and that where your receiver is gonna go. They seem to be duplicated on the top and bottom, allowing you to wire them to either the top or the bottom as you feel is um, desirable. Personally, I would put them on the top because it's easiest to wire them up that way. But if you wanted to put them on the bottom, I guess there they are. Um, 
It's also, I saw this first on the Helio Spring uh, flight controller, but the Helio Spring had these nice wide pads for this is 3.3 3 volt, 5 volt, and ground. And this is for all your accessories. You just solder them all to these pads as opposed to having a little tiny individual pad for each wire. It almost makes me wonder if Airbot is the actual manufacturer of the Helio Spring. Hmm. Yep, that kind of shared thing. Either two people had that idea. It sure looks similar is all I'm saying. <laughs> anyway. That then is the Airbot Omnibus Fireworks V2. It's an F4 flight controller for beta flight with all the cool features and stuff that I talked about here in the video. I'm really impressed with how Airbot has... Uh, continue to try to address the problems that so many of us are having. Things like the ability to add tantalum capacitors to the board instead of having to have an electrolytic sort of hanging off. The ability to change the current sense scale and just all of the functionality they've put in all of the pin mappings and they've got just everything in the kitchen sink on this board. Many people are not going to use all of the functionality that this board has to offer and in fact new Big builders and people who are new to soldering might want to shy away from it. The pads are pretty small. Some of you are going to lift a pad trying to solder onto this, and some of you are just going to be confused by the freaking layout. Like, ah, oh, there's just so much there, right? Um, you know, uh, when I released my flight controller, one of the first things I'm 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 just neurotic. Okay, <laughs> one of the first things I thought was, oh, but what about all the things I didn't put on it? And so many people have come back to me and said, oh my God, this was the simplest build I've ever done. It was so great to have it be so simple and straightforward. And that kind of, it makes me realize that there's sort of two types of people out there. The kind of person who wants, no, no, I dropped it. The kind of person who wants all of this stuff and doesn't mind having just blasted in the face by a bunch of options. And the kind of person who wants to keep things simple. And if you're the kind of person who doesn't mind being blasted in the face with all the options, this may be the board for you. The links to this board are down in the video description and if I've helped you make a decision about which flight controller is for you I sure hope you use them they are affiliate links and they help support me I don't know if you've heard this but this is my full-time job now and affiliate links are one of the easiest ways that you can support me it costs you nothing you just click the link before you make any purchase from one of the affiliated vendors and then I get a little bit of a cut of your sale it just gives goes to me instead of to them what do you care uh, if you don't want to get this exact board there is a support me page down in the video description, which has links to major vendors that I'm affiliated with, like ReadyMade RC, Get FPV, Race Day Quads, Rotor Riot Store, and you can click any of those links anytime you make a purchase. Thank you so much for helping support me and letting me keep doing this thing that I love doing. That's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, if you have any experience with this board, and like I said, I, I just, I saw it on a, I was like, oh, that's really cool. I love that. I want to look at it. I haven't even flown it yet, though. So if you have experience with it, let me know what your experience has been down in the video. Does it have any problems? Does it have any defects I haven't heard of? Tell us quickly. I'll pin your comment to the top of the comment section and we can all not buy it. Or if it's great, we can all buy it. Okay, I've gone on long enough now. I really draw these endings out, don't I? Happy flying. <laughs>